I want to bring this down to more of a practical element for our listeners. You started out in the States. You had this encounter with the Lord at age three, but then, you know, the Lord had to kind of prepare you in many ways. I'm sure you went through different things that the Lord was just preparing you to go and be in Russia or to, you know. Oh, he's preparing me to be a light. That's right, preparing sure. you to be a light. And so, but can you define, what would you say, if, if I was to ask you the question, what is biblically, what is a missionary? What does that look like? How would you define that and bring that down to a practical element that could encourage our listeners mm -hmm. to realize that wherever they're at, the Lord can use them? Well, that's interesting because I go and I speak at churches. I'm trying to tell people about Gospel Inc. I'm trying to tell people about national preachers. And I'll come and I'll share these stories. But you're sitting in the pew and you think, wow, he went to Russia and that man just wanted to know the gospel and it was all ready and he, that's just an amazing experience. Or you know, I'll tell a story about Africa or I'll you know, tell some of my different experiences. And we get this idea when these speakers come like, wow, he's got this special connection to God or he must have really done something right in his mm -hmm. uh, youth or he must have all his disciplines down because God's using him. And we sort of get deceived into thinking that you know, we have to achieve some sort of level for the Lord to use us. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that fruitfulness comes through cultivation, through brokenness. Yes. There's a lot of things that go into yes. that. But the truth is, the Lord wants to use us all. Amen. Like I said earlier, you're a missionary or a mission field. And that term is a little tricky because it's not really a scriptural term. The scripture uses evangelist. Mm -hmm. And so people ask me, well, when did you become a missionary, Dean? I said, well, I became a missionary when I was six years old. And they sort of look at you. But that was the first time I shared my faith. Wow. That was the first time I had an open door and the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit to tell someone who Jesus was. I was six years old mm. on the ice in Maine. And that's... I don't remember what month it was. It could have been several months. Yes. But Shannon and I were out sliding on the ice. And I knew that Shannon didn't go to church. I knew his family didn't go to church. And I was concerned about that because where is he going to go when he dies? Right. Again, at six years old, I haven't had a class in personal evangelism. I don't know that I'm a missionary, but I love the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really do. And I believe in hell and heaven. And I believe in eternity. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to wait for Shannon to become 60 on his deathbed. So I asked him, I said, Shannon, did you, did you ever wonder where you're going to go when you died? And it's so beautiful. You know, sometimes when the, a child, you see a child without the training, it's so organic and natural. Now, I'm not saying it's natural of my own. I would say it's supernatural mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit is leading me. Yes. But I don't have yes. any, I don't have any. You have any nothing preset. Correct. Pre no script. Yeah, no script. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and I remember looking back at it, there's no script. It, it was coming out of my heart. And Shannon didn't know where he was going when he died. I said, well, I do. Well, what do you think he said? Right, I was, I was also the salt of the earth through, God, through Christ mm -hmm, in me. Mm -hmm. I salted the earth. He said, well, where? How do you know? And we sat out there. I remember praying with him distinctly and him putting his hand in my me. We were, we were good little buddies, but I led him in a prayer of salvation. Mm -hmm. Now, again, six years old, the Lord knows who, those who are his and who are sealed, and, and I can trust the Lord to that. But that's when I became a missionary. Mm -hmm. I didn't have all my doctrine down. I still don't. Mm -hmm. Didn't have all the answers, still don't. Mm -hmm. But I was shining in a light. And so that is a challenge for us to see people on stage and think, well, that's the professional missionary. That's the person that's trained to go. That's the person that knows how to interact interculturally. But we are called to go be a light wherever we are. You are entering the mission field when you walk out of your room, when you walk out of the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, sh I should say a little bit about this. I didn't graduate from high school or sit in high school thinking I was gonna go on the foreign mission field. But I wanted to tell other people about the Lord. And I'm right. training my young men now. I said, you know, I don't know what your occupation is gonna be, but you are called to make God known. Mm -hmm. In all your ways acknowledge him. And this is the fiber and, and the work of the church or of your family mm -hmm. to talk to people in the grocery store. 
Mm -hmm. to talk to people at the gas station. Yes. How about foreigners? Let, let me share with you, this is a very little interesting anecdote. I'm going all around the country talking about missions, but I, I give the people and families this little opportunity. I says, you know what, if when you see a foreigner, or you see someone with a different color skin, ask them where they're from. One, that's not offensive. Mm -hmm. That's not offensive. Most people you know, know they stand out, or if they have an accent. And then show a real interest in that. Say, oh, well, I know something about Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, I've read about Egypt. You never know, and you might not know anything about right, right. Tajikistan, but say, oh, wow, where's that? Don't, don't be too prideful, I mean, but show some interest in where they're from. Mm -hmm. And then you say, well, you know, there's different questions to ask. So I have a friend, and, and uh, they, she and her husband, I mean, I'm friends with both of them, they live in Montana. There's not a lot of international people there. But she heard me speak, and it was fascinating. She was in Walmart, and she saw a dark-skinned person. She said, where are you from? And the lady said, yeah, I'm from India. And she was a little shy. It's like, why is this person talking to right, me? Right, right. And the next question is, well, how long have you been here? And she told her, well, I've been here about three years. Now, there's different questions you can ask, but show interest in them. Right. And she said, oh, we'd love to have you over. I'd like to get to know you. You know, this lady had lived there from India in Montana for three years, and no one had ever invited them to the, her house. Wow. I mean, why would they? No one knows her. She's lonely. Mm. A lot of the foreigners that have come here, they know from the media that they're not wanted or they're unregistered, right? And they're, so they're scared. We as the church mm -hmm. should be reaching out and sharing our faith with them. Amen. And, and that story goes on. The, they actually got, became good friends with them and they didn't set out right away to evangelize them mm -hmm. but by because the, they were stark, staunch Hindu. Yes, yes. But by the time Christmas time came, it was interesting. They're seeing all these things, and they've lived in the United States three years, and uh, the lady said, well, are you a Christian? Mm. And my friend said, oh, I love Jesus. Amen. She didn't say yes or no, she said, I love Jesus. She said, well, we've always wondered about Christmas. Could we come to your church? Wow. So they didn't invite them, they invited themselves after they made friends. Mm. And so where was she? Did she go to India? Did she get a, a visa? No, she's right in her hometown, mm. and there's people all around us, mm -hmm. and they're not always international, but that's mm -hmm. where, where Jesus said, lift up your eyes, lift up your eyes, the fields are white to harvest. Wow. And, and again, sometimes international people are, are actually more open. Mm. You ever been to a Chinese restaurant? Yes. If you have, you have interacted with people who have never read God's word. Wow. I guarantee it. Wow. I live in the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. I go to the Chinese restaurant, and I talk to Xiao Tsing. I got her name. I said, how long have you lived here? I mean, she's working at the restaurant. Right. She's not going to come to my church. Right. She works seven days a week at that restaurant. That's right. So you know what the Lord prompted me? Get her a Bible. So I took a, I got a Chinese Bible, mm -hmm. and I brought her. Do you know that was seven years ago to this day? We don't go there a lot. We go there once every four or five months. She knows me. She said, she told me once, you gave me Bible. I am reading. Wow. Right? Wow. So what is that? That's a missionary. That's right. And, and there's Thai restaurants and Laotian restaurants and Nepalese restaurants. Mm -hmm. They're living next door to us. Mm -hmm. Those cultures receive gifts. Give them a Bible. Mm -hmm. They may not read it, but I'll tell you what, they won't read it if you don't give it to them. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, again, another practical way that people could be a missionary. For me, I learned, I got a, I got a normal blue collar job swinging a hammer. I was in the roofing business. Uh, my dad wa was from Montana, so we had a sheep shearing skill. So I learned honestly, not how to be a missionary in Bible college. I learned how to be a missionary in the workforce. Wow. Because, you know, it's easy to bring people into a group and say, okay, we have a chalkboard and we're gonna explain the plan of salvation. But it's another thing to work with ungodly people, mm -hmm. people who are living in darkness or living in sin or who have broken lives and learning to minister to them, not just in truth, but in compassion and in friendship. Yes. And in truth. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting, most of the people we hired on our small little roofing crew had major problems. They were from broken homes, they were addicted to drugs in some way, they'd been in jail. But you know, some of my friends who were cocaine addicts ended up teaching Awana wow. because of the work of the Lord. Now, it usually didn't happen like that. Yes, sir. But it was working with them, talking with them, making Christ known. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. Some of them, one of one of the men we worked with committed suicide, and so I've thrown seeds that the birds have eaten, mm -hmm. but I've held enough golden sheaves to make me want to keep sowing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's 
it's it's a life reaching another life and a lot of that happens like you said driving a nail in sure. the next shingle and it's living beside people living they are watching people. you and exactly. there, there's because there's two sides some people say well let your life show it that's true if your life doesn't show it you don't have you don't have anything to show but there's a place to talk that's there's right. a place to speak truth that's right. in the marketplace yeah uh, my favorite place is talking to people at restaurants because mm-hmm. they're obligated to listen to you that's right <laughs> that's right and i'm not rude um but I've learned different methods and different ways to to share my faith. Mm-hmm. So someone asked me today. They said, "Where were you a missionary?" I, I said, "Where?" Yeah, they were. They knew I was a missionary. I said, "Where were you a missionary?" I said, "Well, this week I was a missionary in Texas." That's right. Yeah. Because I talked to the clerk at Subway yep. about the Lord. Yeah. And about getting a new body in Christ. Amen. You know. So That's there's right. different ways to make Him known. That's right. Praise the Lord. Been, I I should say this too. I, this concept of soul winning. Mm-hmm. We've all heard that because Proverbs eleven thirty says, "He that winneth souls is wise." And so, you grew up. I grew up hearing that soul winning was evangelism, right? We're going to go out on soul winning visitation. That was a term. And if you won a soul, you were able to lead that person to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ was, and they repented of their sins. They asked him to forgive their sins. They they claimed Christ as right. Savior and Lord. Right. And so that was soul winning. Which that would be, I would venture to say, that's the traditional way that people look Correct. at it. Correct, correct. Not traditional meaning biblical, but I'm saying traditional no, meaning no. the general idea that most people would have. of. Soul and winning. I had an insight into that verse, because what we're talking about is evangelism. We're talking about the command of Christ, let your light shine. Mm-hmm. And, and that is very biblical. We're to be that. We're right. supposed to be fishers Amen. of men. Yes. Yep. But that term soul winning is a little, in Proverbs there, is a little different than evangelism. As I research that verse and I look at that verse, you don't win a soul when they repent and receive Christ. You win a soul when they learn to trust you and when they want to confide in you. Mm. So let me flip this around. I have won some souls that still don't serve my Lord Jesus. I have won some souls that haven't repented. And what I mean by that is they trust me, they enjoy my company, That's right. they want to be my friend. I've had, I remember again working on the roof, I had guys that would come and pr- say, will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? And, I, and we would turn it around and say, well, you know, you can, you can come to the Lord. It's like, well, oh, I know, but I'd like you to pray for me. You know, they're still kind of keeping God at yes. arm's length. Yeah, at a distance. but. Because of my care for them, right. the fact that I could play chess with them, the right. fact that we could root for different football teams, That's right. I yeah. had this relationship with them, yeah. and I had won a soul. Wow! Which then, in turn, opens up the opportunity for me to be personal with them wow. in prayer and in evangelism. Wow! So we also need to look at missionary work as not uh, getting notches on our gun. Mm-hmm. We need to look at it as. I'm the light of the world, and people are attracted to light. They are, they are. They yes. may not be attracted to that. You know, the sun is too hot, it's too dangerous, it's too mm-hmm. judgmental, mm-hmm. it's too austere, but I like the light. Yes. And, and we wanna be a savor of Christ in all mm-hmm. places. And so winning souls is not just getting people to acknowledge the gospel in their own That's personal right. life, but it really is getting a friendship and a relationship That's right. so that, they can, yep. that you can go deeper in their lives. Right. Does that make sense? I, it, it really does, and I really appreciate how you how you shared it from that angle. And I think one of the elements of whether it's evangelism, winning souls, sharing the Lord with others, is having that light within us, mm-hmm. kindling that light. And what I mean by that is, I've had I've had those experiences exactly what you're saying, especially in working in the Department of Corrections with different states sure. and working whether it's with the officers or with the inmates, it's that they don't want your Jesus, but, well, or at least they don't think they Correct. want your Jesus. Sure. But what they're attracted to, and I've noticed this, and I've actually had this personally, in personal experience, is they're attracted to that light. Right. And it's like, it's almost like they right. know that they need that, they need that joy, mm-hmm. they need that life, and so, I guess as just an encouragement to not only us, but also to our listeners of that light is a person. That light is not something that 
just memorizing the Romans road will bring that sure. light, but it's actually cultivating a personal an intimate relationship with the Lord on a daily basis because light in many ways is equivalent to purity. And it's like, it's as we as we as believers draw closer in relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord by reading the word and, and having that that fellowship with God and maintaining that, that oneness with the Lord and, and nothing hindering it, it's just like the light of Jesus can shine more mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. more. And like you said, like at first, the person might not, want to hear about sure. Jesus or sure. the gospel or whatever it is, but they but they will come to you for a prayer right. request because Christ is ministering through you to them and they do accept that. And many times that is the open door that God will use to bring them to the knowledge of, of their need for a relationship sure. with Jesus Christ. And they have that need. Yes, they and do. And there's a place to express that, but it's sometimes, I've, sh- I've shared that background about soul winning because sometimes we feel this pressure, like, well, if I don't get them to say a prayer, I didn't right. really succeed. I didn't close the deal. Yeah, or, or I wasn't successful. Right. Or maybe there's something wrong with me. Right. Well, salvation is very clear. That's the work of the Lord. Amen. And our work is to win the soul. Praise God. So there's, there's some encouragement there. Praise the you Lord. You may have a lot of contacts at work or in your neighborhood or even in your family. Amen. That... Um, and again, there's a balance there. You don't want them to persecute you because you're rude and obnoxious. Yes. If they're against your Savior, if they're against your Lord, that's one thing. But uh, we don't want to be odious and obnoxious. But you don't also don't want to be quiet. There's that balance. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I so I think just in conclusion here, I think having talked about some of these practical ways mm-hmm. of how to witness, how to be a missionary where we are. Mm-hmm is critical, but keeping in mind too that the element of supporting others Mm -hmm. that are going outside of the country into foreign fields Mm -hmm. like Gospel Link does is is very vital. And I guess in as as I, I wanna conclude with this, if people do want to go beyond just mm-hmm. being a missionary locally, how can they get involved through Gospel Link or maybe other, it does, it, I'm sure it's not just Gospel Link, sure. but that's the one that you're connected with. Sure. How can they, if, if say they have a burden to support others internationally mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that are reaching the natives for the Lord and that are really doing, they're the boots on the ground. Mm-hmm. They're the ones discipling mm-hmm. those families and those individuals. What would be a couple ways they could support yeah. those those. When you're talking leaders? though, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I just thought of this because th- this is so helpful in raising your family and raising your children. Most of us don't necessarily have the gift of evangelism. Like we don't know what to say. We don't know, um, we, we, we don't know how to approach a stranger. Um, So I've really, really worked with my young people in what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And and there's two things that happen here. There's two things that happen. Uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Sure. And I remember returning from Russia after my first 10 week stint. And every day we were with people. Every day we were going through spiritual things. And you came back and you had that fervor and you had that zeal. It's like, oh wow, I I wanna make the Lord known. I'd like to share some Bible verses. But here was, the, it wasn't happening in America. It wasn't happening. And I thought to myself once, it's like, oh Lord, I wish we had those opportunities that we had in Russia. And the Lord said, lift up your eyes. Hmm. I said, well, I am lifting up, but no one is, you know, they're not saying, come tell us what you've come to tell right, us. Right, right, right. And that's true, we're in a different culture. But the Lord said, you know what? You need to be a fisher. You need to be a fisherman. Hmm. And so I've spent 30 years learning how to fish in America. And I would ask our listeners out there, are you? Mm. Are you? Do you only have one way to present the gospel? Because Jesus sure didn't. That's right. He says, you I'm the bread of, of life. Ways. Yes, that's right. I can give you living water. Amen. I'm the light of the world. That's right. And, and we get caught in this one way, and there's so many different ways, and there's so many different alternatives. And we're told not to talk to strangers, which is very unfortunate. That's not what most of the world does. Most of the world you know, talks to the people that walk by. Mm-hmm. But um, I, w- I wanted to say about your family, 
how do you get your young people to understand that they're missionaries? Um, oh, no, let me finish this story. So, so the Holy Spirit really prompted me. He said, well, Dean, you talk to people in Russia every day. Why? I said, well, that's why I was there. I went to Russia to be a missionary. He says, right. That's the problem here. Why do you go to Walmart? Why well, didn't you go to be a missionary? I went to get the motor oil or the That's baby right, diapers. Or groceries or whatever it right. is, yeah. I said, um, why, do you go, why do you go to uh, the grocery store? Why do you go to the gas? Why wouldn't you get gas? Well, you didn't talk to anyone. That's right, because I'm not a missionary in America. And all of a sudden he said, Dean, you gotta think that different. You are a missionary here. Wow. Now it's kind of a mental it was shift, well like it was an identity yeah. it was an identity expansion it was an yes. illumination yes. because the lord said you're the light of the world in me you're the salt of the earth mm -hmm. but i didn't look at myself like that when i went to walmart right well now i'll be honest and my kids will tell you now i go fishing i go to <laughs> walmart <laughs> i really am when i go to walmart Amen. that's right the guy behind the tire counter he's not doing anything so now I was like, well, what do I ask him? Or how do I get a spiritual conversation started? That's right. How can That's I make right. the Lord known? Yeah. And so this idea of, well, if I was spiritual, I'd become a missionary. If I was really spiritual, the Lord would send me to Zimbabwe. No. Yeah. No. As we're close to the Lord, we talk about him. I love talking about my wife. I love talking about my kids. And so I talk about the Lord. Yes. And my goal isn't to get them to say a prayer. Yeah. My goal is to tell them how much I love the Lord and tell them something about him and who he is. Because I've seen the Lord use his church in different aspects. Mm -hmm. And if that clerk at Walmart heard a Christian come in every day and talk something different, share something different about the aspect of the Lord, his curiosity would start to get sparked. Oh, yes. Who is this? Who is this person they're talking about? Mm -hmm. yep. They'd want to know. Yep. Um, again, I, I want to share this story too, because I have an introvert in my family. He came to me once, he was about 15 years old. He says, Papa, I'm not like you and my big brother. He says, I'm an introvert, which is wonderful if your kids understand their identity and how God made them. He said, I'm not good in front of public. I don't like to be the center of attention. He said, but I like one-on-one. -on -one. And I praised him, I said, I'm so glad you know that. His name's Harvey. I mm -hmm. said, Harvey, I am so glad that you understand who God made you. You're not supposed to be like Papa, but God has made you a special way to get to know people mm -hmm. and, and to reach people. So my introvert has not gone through personal evangelism. I think it's very, very important to teach your kids what salvation is mm -hmm. and what it means, but then to give them the concept we're to make God known, not even just the plan of salvation. Right. It says in all your ways, acknowledge him. Right. Now we're supposed to preach the gospel, make the gospel known, but it, it can be a lot broader than I think we've made it. So Harvey, my introvert came to me, says, Papa, we've, we planted 100 tomatoes this year, which is way too many. Right, we can't can that much tomato juice. That's a, that's a boatload. <laughs> so he says, Papa, I'm gonna pick these tomatoes and I'm gonna go try to talk to people about God. He didn't even use the word evangelism. And I said, well, that's great, Harvey. And I'm a little concerned about him because he's an introvert and he's sometimes naive and I don't know what he's gonna say. But um, I said, you gotta do two things. I said, you can't go alone because Jesus sent us in twos. Mm -hmm. need someone to go along be with you and pray with you and you also need to pray before you go because mm -hmm. it's not your power it's that's not your right. wisdom that's right it's not your tomato that's going to open the door yep so he calls it tomato ministry and again we live in the bible belt and i i, I prepped him i said you know most people aren't going to accept the lord but you need to go out and make friends with people yes and a gift free tomatoes who doesn't yep. like that that's right do you know that's the highlight of the summer wow he has multiple friends that want to go with him on tomato ministry. Wow. It is a spiritual thrill to share your faith. Wow. And he's doing it organically. Yes. Now, obviously, as he does it, what happens? He gets better right. and he learns questions and he learns right. things about people and he comes right. home and asks questions, but he's also now got a burden for the people that live in our area. He's praying for them. Praise God. And during COVID, he led a 70-year-old man to receive Christ as his savior Amen. for the first time in his life. 70, here's this teenager leading a seven year old wow. man to Christ. So sometimes they're out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're in Russia saying, mm -hmm. please come tell us what you've come to tell us. But sometimes they're at the grocery store, they're at the restaurant, they're walking by us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we aren't lifting up our eyes enough. Yes. So I implore people, be a missionary where you are. Amen. Don't think the world's gonna be won to Christ by professional missionaries mm -hmm. or by your pastor. You're the salt of the earth. That's right. And you may never pray with someone to receive Christ, but 
it's your privilege to make him known. Amen. So go do it. Yep. Yep. And 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 I have a lot of things. Uh, again, that's another another methods of evangelism I'd love to talk about because yes. the Lord's creative. But you said you also wanted me. I'm, I'm sorry if I took too much time, but I'm just so encouraged with that because again, that's organically coming out that's of. Right this my, my harvey he, it's yes. organically coming out of him he didn't take yes. a class on it he just yep. loves the lord yep. and and he's winning souls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he only has he only prayed with two people to receive the lord in five years but he loves making the lord known right. and who that's doesn't right. who doesn't like a tomato yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> so um getting involved with gospel blank is obviously something i speak about uh it's a little bit of a challenge i love speaking in churches that's what i do i'm trying to book my schedule full of coming and speaking at churches and telling about gospel inc i share the vanya presentation mm -hmm. in different churches mm -hmm. family camps but sometimes people honestly hear well you're a missionary so you're here after money hmm. and sometimes i have churches that don't want me to come because well we do this in missions and we're our budget is tight it's like right. you know what we should always have an open door to hear about what's going on That's in the right. world amen and i don't think god needs our money yeah i'm pretty sure i read I am the God of all creation. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. That's right. If I was poor, I wouldn't come Psalm ask you. Psalm 50. If I yep. was hungry. Yep. I mean, it's humorous there. There's some humor woven into that. So I am convinced 100% that God doesn't need our money. Mm -hmm. Now, not everyone approaches missions like that. They mm -hmm. come and they say, oh, if we had money, we could do this. If we had money, right. we could do this. Yeah. And it's true. We needed money to build the orphanage. I need money to maintain it. I need money to build a secondary school, but God doesn't. Mm -hmm. So my job is not to go get money out of people. My job again is to actually make it known. Mm -hmm. So when I came to work with Gospel Inc, I had this personal struggle. It's like, Lord, it seems like you're calling into me to be a fundraiser. It was undoubtedly mm -hmm. clear that he was calling us to work with Gospel Inc. Mm -hmm. If I had a chance to tell you that story, it was one of those, okay, we can't miss this writing on the wall, it's very clear. But I don't wanna go out and beg people for money. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit prompted me. He said, you just go tell people what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so when I come and speak at a church, I come and give people a cup of good news. Let me tell you what's happening in Vietnam. Let mm -hmm. me tell you what's happening in Ukraine. Yep. Yep. Let me tell you what's happening in Congo. And sometimes my wife is upset with me. She said, you didn't tell people how they could support the ministry. I say, I didn't? No, you just told them what God was doing. And I think, well, yeah, I guess that's what I was trying to do. Right, right. I do tell people this, so I've learned to say, listen, we need your money as people. This guy in Zimbabwe, he needs your money. God doesn't. And you don't have to give. But giving is, is, is something that freely have received, freely give. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's your privilege. I tell people it's your privilege to make an investment in someone that can't pay you back. It's an opportunity for you to give a spiritual sacrifice mm -hmm. of righteousness. You're taking some of your material money right. and you're giving it to buy Bibles, or you're giving it for the right now the Ukrainian crisis relief. Right. You're helping support a man in Malawi mm -hmm. go spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the 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 um, what do I want to say? The fiber or the basic, the organic kind of, yeah. the undergirding principle of, of yeah. gospel link. Yeah. Yeah. Um, until 2020, I'm going overseas two or three times a year and taking people. I'm taking pastors who come and do discipleship and do training. I'm taking young people that get their toe wet in international right, experience. Right. Um, it's just tremendous to go outside the country and see what the church is like in Zambia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, what it's like to go in the bush and, and go through go through the Old Testament. People have never heard the Old Testament stories. It's wow. like, wow, yes. they didn't know yep. that. Yep. So lots of opportunities out there and um, lots of needs either giving, going, praying. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this, sometimes people don't know what to do. So I don't know what to do. But we live in the internet age. We live in the day of international travel. And I know that there's pandemics and wars that curtail that, but I don't think anyone from this age is going to stand before the Lord of the harvest and say, I didn't know. Right. I didn't know. There's, there's opportunity to be involved. That's and right. I encourage people to do that. Right, and the opportunity starts with where you are. Yeah, it's kind of like the the parable of the talents. You know, one one had started out with a small amount, and the other had, mm -hmm. you know, a more, and then the other had more. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and then but it wasn't the idea of 
and you could relate that to missions work yeah you know or just being living at your home and if you will living a normal life and working a normal job right. but the, the bottom line of that is each one of those people that had those talents were held accountable not for how many necessarily they had when they begun but how they invested that. that's right and if we have the light of jesus christ kind of going full circle here if we have a relationship with the lord if we are a believer meaning god's spirit is living within us we have a talent and that talent is god's life and god does not want that just to stay with me god wants that to go to walmart mm. god wants that to go to the gas station mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. wants that to go even over seas mm -hmm. wherever it is whether it's in person or over mm. social media or or where wherever it's at god's light is is going to go as we maintain our relationship with him amen and so dean we're just really grateful I, i've got to come back and give do another podcast on on creative ways for for children families wow. individuals to yes. to be that light and to be missionaries right. where they are i'd love right. that That's absolutely for our listeners we really hope that you guys have been encouraged and i i also hope that maybe some of if you will the ideas that you've had in boxes if i can picture this like sometimes i i have ideas and i have them in like a mental box and i only see it that way until someone kind of opens the box for me if you will and i just feel like talking with you dean has just been kind of breaking some of those boxes open sure. and really and what it is <laughs> frankly it's bringing in the truth of mm -hmm. the word of god it's seeing it from god's perspective mm -hmm. and with his eyes and i just pray that my hope and my desire for our listeners is that they will see that well, wait a minute i can share the love of jesus where i am at i don't have to have a degree in theology you know i don't have to be well educated no if god's spirit lives in you he will equip you and he is equipping you right this very minute to share that light to share that love with the lost mm. so for our listeners we hope you guys have been encouraged if you have not subscribed to the podcast make sure you do so and we look forward to you joining us on our next episode god bless you guys